and today, what's up? We are talking with Nancy Ann on Actual Studio about something that every single one of us needs, and there's never a shortage of use, and that is improv skills, right? Thank every, you. Thank you. Thank you. You're going to have to have an impromptu conversation, whether it's small talk, whether you're on the plane, whether you're trying to get into the club and talk to the bouncer, you're improv <laughs> So Nancy is an expert with over 20 plus years, not only as an actor and a nurse, but as an improv instructor and more importantly, a comic herself. So she understands the entire ecosystem of comedy. And that's why we're so grateful to have her bring her very special twist on this very specific uh, skill set to Aquil Studio today. Welcome, Nancy, to the Acro Studio Lounge. Thank you for having me. I so appreciate this. You know, I like what you said about comedy and improv. And I always start that they're similar but very different. Comedy is somewhat rehearsed and practiced. Improv, you just jump in there. And improv is more organic. We don't know what we're going to say. We don't have it practiced. But did you ever meet those people who things just fly out of their mouths and you're like, I wish I would have thought of that. Well, after a couple sessions of improv with me, you're going to be like that. So that's why it's very necessary yeah, and so important. Let's, let's dig right into what this is. So we are offering at Acro Studio our launch, one of our launch series called The Ways of LA. And everyone knows someone who's interested in getting into entertainment or just needs a little direction of what they should do and what moves they might want to make. This is an, an excellent course for them to take because it's a series that has different steps because through your journey, you're going to need different things in your, in your, um, to put in your craft toolbox. That's different. true. That's true. And yeah. one of the things I start with improv is using yes. And because yes. And as anybody who knows improv will open doors, but no, but will shut the doors. So even though you may want to say no, you say, yes, and I'd love to be on your committee, perhaps in a couple of months. So yeah, you might be saying no, but you're saying yes, and. And yes, and will open doors. Yes, and I'd love to come to that party. Let me know when it is. So we need to practice the yes, and skill every day. It's a muscle. The more we do it, the easier it gets. So I go around and we do yes, and games. You can't rehearse them. And then I also have a fun little game called interview an interviewee expert. So somebody yells out, oh, you know, Roz or Marilyn is an expert on underwater fishing. And she doesn't know anything about it, but then she gets whatever she says, she makes it up. Oh, I put on my tank, I go under, I find the little fish, I bring them up. We had somebody once that was an expert on underwater basket weaving. I kid you not. She didn't know anything about it, but she started out when she was little. She would make little baskets and then they became very intricate. And she said, now I travel the world. And she did amazing. We just gave her this and I asked her, how did she get into it? So she took the whole topic and just flew with it. And Isn't that's it the incredible? skill that you'll I get. Mean, one, it's just incredible. And I love the fact that improv just brings out our creativity, right? That's a, true. Our mind that we kept hidden, that uh -huh. we open up those special, you know, treasure boxes that only we have the key to, but that key would have never been found if you hadn't asked that question to make us unlock that part of our personality. That's, that's true. There was a woman once in a wheelchair and somebody said you were a climber. And I thought, how's she going to do this? And she said, oh, I put that you know, lift in and then I hoisted myself up and again and I hoisted myself up. And at the end I said, how did you come up with all that? And she said, my grandson does climbing. So I just used it. And you could almost see her lifting out of the wheelchair and climbing the mountains and, and going higher and higher. And it was just amazing. She did the whole thing in the wheelchair, but boy, you could see those wheels turning. She was climbing the highest mountain. And when that's, that's, you just alluded to something that's super helpful in any industry that is a great skill and muscle mm -hmm. taught and learned. And that is the art of storytelling, right? Uh, storytelling. And you could call on all your things in the past and you make it up. 
some of it may be true and some may not be. But at the end of the story, you're like, oh my gosh, I loved it. So that's true. It's storytelling, improvisation, acting, all coming together. That's in right. a wheelchair, I mean, <laughs> kind of been handy capable in her mind and in her world. Uh -huh. But tell me that I have to get out of my handy capable situation and, and allow my mind to go to a walking, jumping person. What do I do? How do I do that? Well, it was so amazing to see her do this. I remember this. And we all like ended up with tears at the end. Like, oh, my gosh, she's climbing the mountain. And she sat, you know, in her wheelchair. Of course, she never got out and huffed and puffed and said, that was a lot of fun. And we didn't have any of this pre-planned or preconceived. Right. But what I, and that's exactly right. And But what I really wanted to make about that point was she went to a story of someone she knew. Mm -hmm. like, her nephew and she could mm -hmm. learn from the nephew and that's what I bring up in these courses and the classes it's like you're gonna use when we talk about being an act real right the name of the whole school is, that is I want you to act real but you're gonna use inspiration probably from your mm -hmm. real life because that's yes. the closest thing to you and what improv does is help you really harness what's in your arsenal already like i call what's in your acting toolkit already mm -hmm. so if i need to think about somebody who's a ballerina and hurt her leg and i've never i don't i'm not a ballerina i don't dance and i've never had a broken leg but my girlfriend did my best friend in third grade and i remember mm -hmm. she hobble around and uh, you know always asked for ice and we were like oh what are you gonna do with all that ice and she would just put it on the knee and uh -huh. know that until the time but that's something that I would, that's the first story that comes to my mind. And that's what this muscle exercise of improv will do is help you uncover and, and, and massage those stories so that when you go for your next event or you want to relate to a person, they may share a story with you, but you have one in the back of your mind that'll bring that connection. And that connection is the start of the relationship, right? Right. Right. And as an actor, I've been on auditions where maybe you memorize one or two pages and then you get in and they go, you know what, we're just going to take that away. And why don't you just make up the rules or make up the lines? And I love that. A lot of actors are like, oh, my gosh, I memorized all this. So they take it away and they'll say, let's just talk normal. And then they like what you do. And they say, you know what, I was hired once on a police show, a cop show. And they said, we're just going to use your words that you said. So just remember what you say. So even though it's your words and you're making it up, remember what you said, because they may say, use that over and over and forget the whole script. So there is a little yeah, improv. Yeah, that happened. Um, I've had parts written for me. I'm like, mm -hmm. I, don't match. I know I don't match what they're looking for. I, I would just think I was wasting their time even showing up. Mindset. Why am I even coming in here? I don't match any of this stuff. And what would they end up doing? Making a part for me. Because I brought what I did to that situation that they never thought of. And that that's true. That's true. Yes. Yeah. That's on this police show, I remember they said, we liked your words. So remember them because we're going to use them over and over. I was right. like, okay. So they, they use your words. Uh -huh. They, they did. Parts for you. Like so many things back to the yes and situation, mm -hmm. right? Yes. I'm in here to do that. You asked me to, yes. I, I haven't, but yes, I can do that. And what else do you need? Not, no, I don't do that. And uh, improv also sharpens your listening skills because maybe they'll take you a different path. They'll say, you know, you came in here for the crazy mom, but we see you as the smart mom and we want to take you down this path. So all of a sudden you're changing the role and they want you to change the role. So listening skills are so important. A lot of times I've been told by casting people, you're out if you don't listen. We say, look to the left, look to the right, look straight ahead. And the people that start here and they go opposite, they're like, if they can't know what left and right is, they're I out the door. <laughs> there, there you go. And then they'll do that a lot. Profile, profile and in the center and the actors that go oh okay and they start in the center and they do their own it's like if they can't listen to that we don't want them on the set because what are they going to be like on the right. set and, the, and really one of the biggest assets that someone has to a community of uh, creatives on set 
is the ability to pivot. Yes. Yes. If you go, somebody isn't doesn't make it. Mm -hmm. They have an accident, right? That's right. Wardrobe malfunction like this that happened. Mm -hmm. Or something <laughs> greater, but I have on clothes. I was <laughs> I could tell. <laughs> or the other thing, too, you come in at seven and they say, oh, don't worry, we're not going to get you till 12. And then you are mellowing out and they go, oh, you know what? We need you now at eight or nine. You're like, oh, OK. So be ready always. I've had they that switch happen. The scenes. They because switch the scene. Right. Uh -huh. right. And the mom in there, they're like, oh, hey, TJ, you can do that. I'm like, yes, I can. Yes, I can. And be ready in an hour. No problem. <laughs> So I think I think it's great. And having been, um, I want to pivot a little bit to the uh, onset and and when you're a comic, you know, because mm -hmm. we are having our comedy courses. Yes. And giving open mics and opportunities right here in Orange County. If that's you amazing. Can. That's amazing. You could practice those skills, and that's so important because what people practice at home is so different when they get in front of an audience and the mic and the lights and maybe the hecklers. So you have to be ready to yeah. pivot. Comic, do you uh, pivot on stage? Like, if you had a set of routine uh, planned, your five mm -hmm. minutes, and the room is just not receptive, like you're bombing and bombing. Do you go through just to get the practice or do you try to change up your routine right then because you have that skill set to see if you can win them with the I'm pretty day? flexible. A lot of comics aren't. I would change it up because I'll actually do a little interaction like, oh, I see you're enjoying your drink there so much, sir. You're talking to your drink. Is it talking back? So I'll kind of interact with the audience because if they're not listening to me, why should I just go blah, blah, blah? So I'll bring them in, you know, and I've done that before. It's like, oh, your drink must be really good. <laughs> so and then they realize, oh, I'm talking out loud to my drink. And some of them interact with me and some just kind of feel, you know, funny that I called on them. But I'll say you should be aware of what's happening in front of you. So, yes, I do pivot very, very easily. I work with the audience and each audience is different. Yes. And then you are making a first impression and you're a judge tell me a little bit about some of the competitions you've judged and what oh. it stood out to the winners and those who didn't place oh and thank you i i was a judge for the miss anaheim contest and we had different categories the young ones that were in elementary school junior high and high school and a lot of them they came in so prepared it was so polished you got the feeling like if somebody in the audience would sneeze, they would lose their place. Like they memorized it to the point. And we didn't really like those people. A lot of us didn't vote for them. We liked the ones that it appeared like they knew what they were talking about, but they were also talking off the cuff. And I'm sure it was memorized to the point, but they knew when to pause. They kind of looked a certain way. If people laughed, they interacted with the guy over there. And those are the people that went on. And then it was also a beauty contest. You know, they were in workout clothes. They don't do a lot of bathing suits anymore. They did more workout clothes. They did evening gowns. So all of this is how we judged. And again, when they spoke, they had to speak like they knew what they were talking about, but they could also, I love that word, pivot and change. And some of them were so prepared and they were so stiff. We were like, oh, I don't know about that person because these contests, are polishing the kids to go out and represent their area, whether it's Anaheim, Cerritos, or whatever, and then they'll go on to the Miss California pageant. So we need them to be flexible and think in the moment. That's what we were That's looking so for. That's so great. That's such an incredibly uh, great nugget. Yes. For people who can just be present the information in an organic way. Mm -hmm. not show that they've just been over rehearsed because then it feels staged and you don't right, think right. they didn't come across as real I mean they may looked pretty and in their you know, but they didn't come across as real <laughs> yeah. I am very pretty act real we want real people <laughs> oh hi oh I'm not acting now huh. I'm acting now I'm acting now how am I doing oh I'm, I'm real now do you see the difference like, yes I don't know. I don't know if people know the difference. I know the difference, but sometimes 
they're not taught that. Even when you go in class and you're being mm-hmm. put up, you're just kind of observing that particular behavior. But what we want to know is what was the thought process to get you there? The real work is behind the scenes and here. And some what? people change their voices, it's, which isn't necessary. Right. You know, they're doing a commercial and all of a sudden it's like, would you like to buy this book? This book is very good. It's on laughter. Where it's like, you don't have to change your book voice. It's like, I have a book on laughter, you know, just be real. It's the mind, <laughs> right? So it's the way you think about it in your head that's going to change the delivery. From, uh-huh. that, from your pacing to the, the point of origin mm-hmm. to your focus to your intention and that's where technique comes in and really being able to think on your feet and that's right if your partner whether you're doing a presentation for a business let's say you're in a business relationship or if you are in a scene with another person and you have one whole way you're going to go at it you have your backstory and they just showed up late sweaty Ugh. and you have to go on and you are supposed to be at a restaurant, a high-end restaurant, and here comes this sweaty guy right next to you. Are you going to go ahead and <laughs> and do the scene as is? Or are you going to find a way to pivot, improv it to make it make sense? Sometimes you have to do that on set because things happen. They and it'll have- make you look like a, a more professional actor too. And exactly. they know that this guy maybe isn't really ready. And in the audition, they'll go, okay, we're not going to use him, but we like the way she presented it. So we'll go with her and another guy. So it's, it, you, you got to learn to make it your own and be real. And they'll see that and they'll hire you for that. Yes. Yeah. So, and you just said it right there, act real. Act real, that's what it's about. You know, you were saying something about delivering your lines. A long time ago, somebody said, put like a friend's name in, even though you're not gonna say it out loud. Like, you know, Anne, I'd like to tell you about this laughter book. It has helped me so much versus, hi, I'd like to tell you about this laughter book, because that's more presentation. So if you just think in your mind, I have a real good friend, Anne, we grew up together, so I always use Anne. So I go, you know, Anne, but they don't hear that. And then I just go, I'd like to tell you about this book. So if you put somebody in there, whether it's a friend, a mom, or a cousin, and then just start talking, but try not to say that part out loud. <laughs> but see, that's that's why you come and take Nancy Ann's improv for help. Mm-hmm. Huh? With Aqua Studio, because that's something she's specifically doing with our kids and our students to help them. And I and 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 to that point, that's such a good tangible takeaway. Yes, it is useful tools, things you'll remember on the spot, acronyms, whatever we're gonna come up with. However, uh-huh. best. And that's the other thing I love. I love about what we're offering. It's you're going to find a place to shine. And each person is different. So we are going to find how you shine here and somebody else shines there and how you're different. We're going to pull that out. This is what our studio is about. Yay. <laughs> Yay. Was, anything else you want to add? I, um, I, I think that um, it's going to be a real gift. I'm so honored to have you. I'm really excited about getting the comedy part going and having the kids come in on and actually get to go up in front of their families. You I know? know, and try it out loud because it and is different. It yes, and and really learn the business side of it yes. too. How do I get the bookings? What do I charge? How many freebies do I give? What do you know? Please, you know, why do I have to do it this way and not this way? And give them a reason because a lot of times we get so close to all of our material, whether it's a screen. Mm-hmm play that we wrote or you know a show idea or a poem and once we put it in the world it really is what the world says about it right and you know you never know who's in the audience I was told this a long time ago whether you're doing a live show a play comedy somebody in the back may just be sitting there eating his food listening but he's a big casting person or a producer or a director so yes you want to do your best at every show because you don't know who that guy is in the back he may have lots of connections up in Hollywood. Especially if you mm-hmm. come to the Acro Studio Lounge Showcase Days. Yes. We have lots of fun people who like to show up because we know talent over here. And we're going to teach you the talent to win in whatever field you're about to go into in the creative arts. So I think that's it for today. 
I love you, Nancy Ann. Thank so you. Thank you so much for having me. It's great seeing you guys. And remember, people, keep it real. Act real.